Yo, what's going on guys? EK9 here, bringing you guys a short little video. So as you guys can see, we do have the Jason Zucker trade on our screen here. I know I'm a little late to it, but I want to just uh, touch base and give my thoughts on this trade. So from first glance, it definitely looks like it's a clear, clear uh, Minnesota win. And I think it still stays true to this day. I think no matter which way you try and spin it, I definitely think that long-term Minnesota wins this trade. Short-term, Pittsburgh does look like they can make a run with this maybe potential trade. Uh, Galchenyuk hasn't really produced as much as they were wishing after they got him through the Kessel trade. He's got 17 points in 46 games with only 5 goals. And Jason Zucker's on uh, pace for about a 40-point season. He's maybe a little bit more than 40 points. He's got 29 points in 46 games. Not too shabby. So Zucker is producing a little bit higher than Galchenyuk by almost double. So it's interesting to see how this trade's going to play out, but it's the assets involved with this trade that make it such a one-sided trade. And I know I've talked to a lot of Pittsburgh fans. I, I'm a Shark fan, and I, I'm not a big Penguin fan at all. But this trade doesn't make sense uh, with the Penguins. The Penguins have lacked a little bit of defense throughout the, the years. They, you know, they had some stability, but it's kind of slipping a bit and Kale Addison is a big big prospect that would have helped tremendously with this team so throwing him away as well as a first round pick now this picks going to be a first round pick regardless I know it's a conditional but I believe the condition is if they do make the playoffs then this pick goes to a 2021 pick if they do not make the playoffs, then this pick is a 2020 first round pick. So either way, Minnesota gets a first round pick out of this. And this trade is, I agree, it's definitely very one-sided. But I'm a little scared as to what this sets for the trade deadline. This trade uh, was made a couple weeks prior to the trade deadline. It's coming up very, very soon. And a trade like this just raises all of the players of the GMs for guys like Chris Kreider, Matt Dumba. You just raise the bar on how much their value is because GMs are going to be looking for their maximum return. Especially if a guy like Zucker can bring you in a first round pick plus a really good defensive prospect. I mean, Kale Addison looked phenomenal for Team Canada in, in the uh, World Juniors. Plus they get Galchenyuk, who's, who's a bit of a risk, but... You know, it's still an asset, and I definitely think for Zucker, Zucker's definitely a, he's a mediocre player, but I mean, for the value they paid for him, a, a definite high-end prospect, uh, first-round pick, plus a decent player for Zucker, I think that's a little high, When and this is what's going to become when we watch a trade deadline, how many trades are actually going to complete it, because people are going to use this logic of, well, we got this much for Zucker, we watched you get that much for Zucker. Now we want this much for Kreider. Now we want this much for Dumba. Guys like that. We want this much for Vatnin. It definitely sets that precedent that they want more value than what the player is actually worth. Because I guarantee you that this trade, as you guys can see on here, is definitely one-sided. And it's not even close. The, like People have tried to make sense and say, yeah, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a really good move for both teams. Pittsburgh in the short term, yeah, going for another cup, and Minnesota in the long run because they're adding a prospect plus a pick. I mean, but either way you look at it, yeah, they, they benefit a little bit more getting themselves a nice left winger that's going to play pretty good with Crosby as far as I'm concerned, but it's still a massive overpayment. I've seen the same thing with the Sharks. Sharks last year, they... Massive, they massively overpaid for Eric Carlson, and everyone thought, hey, the Sharks... The Sharks dominated this trade. The Sharks won this trade completely. We gave up, you know, uh, Rudolph, uh, a couple of prospects. Josh Norris was one. Uh, we got rid of Chris Tierney. Uh, we got rid of our pick. That's the 20, uh, 21st round pick. So based on how it's going, it could end up being the number one pick in the draft, depending if the Sharks fail the rebound. But it was a big trade. Everyone was like, well, they didn't give up too, too much. But... It was enough to really make this look like it could be an Ottawa win long term with the way that this trade's played out, you know, and I think that's how it's going to be here. Short term, yeah, like Pittsburgh has a really big player, but long term, giving up one of your great prospects plus a pick and a mediocre player, it just it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe you guys can try and explain to me what your guys' thoughts are to make sense of this, but... 
I guarantee you when I do actually simulate this trade, it's going to get approved no problem because, uh, well, Pittsburgh won't approve it, but if it was just the Minnesota, definitely would be approved. But we'll see how this looks here. So we go to, yeah, the Penguins totally reject that trade. And what would we have to give up to actually get that? We'd have to throw in somebody to even make sense of this. So probably a guy like Eric Stahl and maybe, maybe a pick. Because there's no way that just Zucker alone is going to get you that much value. Yeah, Pittsburgh would be over the salary cap. But that's what I'm trying to get at, guys. There's no way this, this trade actually makes sense in the grand scheme of things. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this. Let me know if you guys think it's going to have a big impact on the market come trade deadline time. Or do you guys think it's just one trade and it's no big deal? Alright, guys. See you guys soon.